Welcome back. In this video we're going to introduce something called the linear correlation coefficient. We're going to talk about its properties and we're going to see how to compute and interpret the linear correlation coefficient. So in our last video we looked at scatter plots that showed a roughly linear relationship between an x variable and a y variable or sometimes we'll call those the explanatory and the response variable. And what we mean by a roughly linear relationship is that as the x variable increases, the y variable tends to either increase or decrease at a roughly constant rate. And so another way to think about that is to say that if we drew a line through that cloud of points, that line would serve as a fairly adequate model to describe the structure of the data. But now what we need is something that's more quantitative, more of an objective measure of how well these points follow a linear pattern. And so that takes us to the linear correlation coefficient. And so here's the formula for the linear correlation coefficient the symbol that we'll use is lowercase r. Now this is a fairly messy formula, but the good news is we're never going to have to calculate this by hand. We're going to let statistical software do the calculations. But it is important to know what this is a measure of. So it turns out that r is a measure of the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two variables. And now it turns out that r is always going to be a number between negative 1 and 1. So it can be as small as negative 1, it can be as big as positive 1, or it's going to be any number in between. So let's look at some examples. So in this first example, suppose we had a scatter plot where the points fell precisely on a diagonal line. Now in that case the correlation coefficient is going to turn out to be exactly 1 because those points follow a perfect linear pattern. And if we imagine drawing a line through those points, that line would have a positive slope. So the correlation coefficient is going to turn out to be positive 1. Now, suppose we have the same general pattern, but with somewhat more scatter in the points. Again, there's a strong linear trend in the data, but the points are no longer fitting precisely on a straight line. Well, now we're going to get a correlation coefficient that's again going to be positive, but it's not going to be exactly 1 anymore. But in this case, we might get a correlation coefficient close to 1, maybe something like 0.9. Now again, the same general linear trend in the data, but with more scatter. So we're going to get a positive correlation coefficient, but it's going to be somewhat closer to zero, maybe something like 0.4. Now let's take again a situation where the points fall precisely on a diagonal line, but this time the slope of that line would be negative. Well, in this case, we'd end up with a correlation coefficient of precisely negative 1. Here, we've still got the same general negative linear trend, but with more variation in the data. So we might expect a correlation coefficient something like negative 0.9. And here there's even more variation in the data. Now again the data follows a negative linear trend. As the x values increase, the y values are tending to decrease. But it's less of a perfect straight line pattern, so the correlation coefficient is going to be closer to zero, something like maybe r equals negative 0.4. And now here's a situation where there's no linear trend in the data at all. As x increases, we don't see any predictable linear pattern in y. 
So what we'd see here is we'd get a correlation coefficient r close to zero, indicating no linear trend in the data, positive or negative. And finally, here's a situation where there is a very predictable trend or pattern in the data. But notice it's not linear. So once again, our correlation coefficient r is going to be close to zero because r measures the strength and direction of a linear trend in the data. And even though there's a very strong predictable pattern in this data, it's not linear. So our correlation coefficient is going to be close to zero. So once again, our correlation coefficient r, sometimes this is called Pearson's correlation coefficient, it's always going to be a number between negative 1 and 1. And we've developed some general rules here. We're going to say that when r is close to negative 1, that indicates evidence of a negative linear relationship. When r is close to positive 1, that's evidence of a positive linear relationship. And when r is close to 0, that's indicating little or no evidence of a linear relationship. And so as we've said, the correlation coefficient r indicates the direction of the linear relationship. And we see that by its sign, whether it's positive or negative. And then the magnitude, how positive or how negative r is, tells us the strength of the linear relationship. OK, so next up, let's look at how to calculate the correlation coefficient. Remember we showed that it had a rather messy looking formula, but we're never going to have to worry about calculating it by hand. We'll let the software do it. So I'm back out in StatCrunch, and I've got that age and cholesterol data that we were using in the earlier video. So now, to calculate the correlation coefficient, I'm going to go to Stat, Summary Stats, Correlation, Now I need to select the variables for which I want to calculate the correlation coefficient. Of course, that's going to be age and cholesterol. Now notice when you select cholesterol, you're going to have to hold down the control key in order to select more than one column there. Now compute. And there's our correlation between age and total cholesterol about 0.72. So now we're going to combine two pieces of information to try to draw a conclusion. Remember in the earlier video we created the scatter plot showing cholesterol plotted against age. And just a moment ago we calculated the correlation coefficient of about 0.72. Now remember the correlation coefficient, it always runs between negative 1 and positive 1. So a correlation coefficient of 0.72, that's getting to be moderately strong in the positive direction. So combining that correlation coefficient of about 0.72 with the scatter plot, we're going to conclude that there's a moderately strong positive linear relationship between cholesterol and age.